Hi, this is Lorene. Um, I'm here to do another video and I'm going to get started as soon as I just clear center and balance my energy. So just give me a minute. Okay, so I've had a few interesting things happen this week, but first I just feel like I want to start at the end. Um, so when I was clearing, centering and balancing my energy and I go through my whole, I don't know, program of clearing all the word things I say and the energy I project and the intention to clear my energy while I was doing that, um, I had some energies come in the galactic community I spoke to last weekend and this is was the message it was um, we share joy love and happiness with the people of earth we hope and we empower you on your path and we set the intention to help you find your path to joy, love, and happiness. We share this energy with you as we welcome you to the galactic community. And that was the message. And I think the most powerful thing was that sharing the intention of helping us through this transition of finding joy, loving, ending at a place of joy, love, and happiness. But then also that statement of we welcome you to the galactic community was definitive. That wasn't like we hope you join the galactic community. It was like, that's where you're going. So we they were welcoming you. And then this motion is from the heart center out to Mother Earth and all the beings on Mother Earth um, sharing that energy from the heart center. And so I just felt that was really important and I wanted to start with that just for people who don't necessarily watch the whole video. Um, sometimes they can start a little bit uh, ominous and maybe um, uh, the information is intense. Um, and so sometimes it's good to start with a really positive message. So we are on the right path. for those of us who are really doing the work and centering, clearing and balancing our energy and working on releasing the fear and the paradigms that we've been kind of subject to and opening our hearts to um, our faith and our trust and our divine creator and each other, it's, it's, end, it's gonna end very well for us. So um, I think that's a very encouraging message. There's two other things that happened this week. For, uh, first of all, I got very strong messages on explaining time, space, um, and energy and matter. Um, Cause I've often said there's only, I've, there's only right now. Um, there is no past, there's no future. There's just the present right now. Uh, time is a construct that has been created by us in this reality. And no other beings in the universe kind of see time the same way we do, or this idea of time. So I've been, um, I got messages on talking about that really briefly. And then also very interestingly enough, I had an Alpha Draco come in, a collective that has ascended, uh, not just transcended their consciousness, but has ascended and left the physical form. And now they, they are guardians or what many people would consider or have called ascended masters in the universe. And they help, um, they have a very specific role, just like the mantis beings who came through two weeks ago have a very specific role within the universe of kind of the DNA. Uh, they understand uh, how DNA works and how it's manipulated and how, how its effects um, manifest into the world, uh, into the universe. And so these Alpha Dracos have a very specific role. Um, reptilians have a very specific role in the universe. So first I just wanna talk about um, this whole idea of time, space, because time... Okay, so in the past I've said on many different videos that there's only right now, um, this present moment, there's really no past or no future it's right now and this now moment creates 
our perception of past and future. Um, energy and matter are the same. Uh, time and space are the same. And so I watch a lot of Michio Kaku on his videos on The Big Think on YouTube. Very interesting. He explains a lot of really complex concepts, theories, uh, scientific um, theories related to quantum physics, and he makes them accessible. And I'm going to put links in the description for all the stuff I'm talking about if you want to do your own, for, as a starting place for you to do research. But um, this whole idea of uh, time and space starts at this, your, is based on the understanding of quantum mechanics. So the double slit theory, Schrodinger's cat, Heisenberg um, had, I can't remember the, what the title of the research is, but is also theorized in this area. Um, and if you read about that and start to understand how the consciousness creates the reality and how a particle of energy responds to the observer, okay, you have to understand that reality, that truth, to really kind of under grasp what I'm going to explain to you. And over the last five years, I've just really had a very massive spiritual awakening and I'm being taught how the nature of the universe is. I trust implicitly in my um, intuition. I trust implicitly in my guides and I'm completely open to their guidance. So um, I don't question it, but I do encourage you to question all the information that you receive and do your own research. And I'm, like I said, I'm going to give you a uh, kind of a starting place, but just listen to your intuition and go in any direction that you feel best suits you because that'll help you on your purpose. That'll help you figure out what you're here to do in this world, in this lifetime. You just follow the breadcrumbs. And just really quick, I have all these journals. I have a ton of them. I have, well, not a ton. I have six. And... They're breadcrumbs, my visions, my experiences, they're breadcrumbs that help teach me about the universe. And I go back over them and I read through them and I connect the dots, you know, I follow the breadcrumbs and they lead me to, on a path of understanding. And when I first was exposed to all time is now, everything is now, I'm like, what are they talking about? Because I know what I did when I was a kid. I know vacations we went on. I know who my family is. I know where I'm at right now. I know what I'm hoping for my future. So this concept of time exists in my consciousness. But what does that mean when I get these messages that, well, there's only right now and you need to create your reality based on what your actions are? What does that mean? So this is what I was told this week very specifically. And I was like, duh, you know, yeah, now I get it. Now I have the full picture. I understood it and I accepted that truth, but now I have the full picture. And so this book, the density of this book versus the density of like, let's say my hair or the wind um, or a leaf, they're different densities, but that density is based on the frequency of the particles of energy that create this book versus a strand of hair versus my plant over there. Um, it's based on the vibration, okay, the frequency. Um, and so if you watch, I listen to a lot of, uh, I watch a lot of Gaia and I listen to Emery Smith and then even Corey Good talked about how when he was, was uh, engaging the Blue Avians, how they just would appear and then he would translate the messages. Um, Emory Smith talks about on his, through the secret space program on um, uh, research uh, that he would do where they would travel through a gate um, and they would be in like let's say a lab underground in whatever country um, or on whatever continent and then they would step through the gate and they'd be on a different world. So a high level being um, high, high level, high density, a, a being that has ascended and left the physical form who is pure consciousness 
only need to shift their frequency to enter my reality. Um, I have a frequency that my, vo my body vibrates at. Uh, all energy does. And at this frequency, at this vibration, I exist on this plane, in this reality here on Earth. Any, there is, I'm sure, an Arcturan somewhere in my room, a Pleiadian somewhere in my room. There is um, any being existing in the universe is right here. The only thing that separates them from me from sitting on my lap is their vibration, is their frequency, how they vibrate. But we are all existing in the same space. So in order for an Arcturan or a reptilian or any being or any energy to manifest in my bedroom or in my living room, the only thing they have to do is shift their frequency. And as a being of pure consciousness who has transcended, ascended to a certain level of consciousness, they are consciously aware that this was, is within their capacity. What happens when they transition, when they shift their vibra uh, vibration and they move into, let's say, my space, they are subject to the laws that create the reality that I live in. The laws that create the reality that I live in are based on my experiences in this manifestation, in this world, as Loreen. So the laws of physics truly are based on our consciousness. So the laws of physics here on my perception of Earth are going to be different from what the laws of physics are to an Arcturan on their world, which is right here at a different frequency. Okay? It's just right here in this moment. So one day when I'm able to, I'm transcended and ascended past this physical form, all I have to do to visit my lifetime, some of my favorite memories as of a child, like sitting next to my dad while he's changing the um, spark plugs on the car and handing him tools, those are some of my favorite memories, working in the garden with him. Um, I just have to shift my vibration and I will be in that reality and that will be my now. That will be my moment. Uh, I will be subject to those physical laws that create that reality, but that is, it's as simple as that. That is what is meant when we say, um, uh, when I say there's only right now, okay? So now the Stargate, when we talk about, now I'm 53, I was in the 80s, um, James Spader and Kurt Russell did the movie Stargate and they found this Stargate and they step through the Stargate and they end up on a different world. What those Stargates are, the, the Stargate that Emory Smith walked through um, and was on a, another world, all it is is a mechanism to shift our vibration. That's why on one side of the um, the stargate you're here on earth in this reality the stargate will shift your vibration to match the frequency of the world that you are going to you're not traveling through space and time it may you may think you're traveling through space and time because the way our brain because we are physically manifested you know according to our reality and the way our brain our physical self perceives this transition or this change in vibration we see or feel like we're moving through a wormhole that is how we perceive it that's how our consciousness perceives it but reality is we're just moving from one space to another and that mechanism is shifting our vibrate our vibration and because we are using a mechanism, again, we are subject to the laws of the reality that we've created and whatever. So I think I heard Emery Smith saying, if you go to the outside, go near the outside, you have to walk straight through the middle. Otherwise, you know, catastrophes can happen because our physical selves who don't, ha we don't have the conscious ability to shift our vibration, to move from one place to another. We are subject to whatever the limits of that mechanism are. Okay. Does that make sense? It's kind of confusing, but it goes back to, we create our reality with our consciousness. It's all about this idea, this particle of energy and how it works. There's 
one particle of energy carries the whole of the universe in it. It carries all the knowledge. It carries um, the experiences. It carries the existence of the existence of the universe in it. It's as simple. It's very simple. We make it very confusing, but it's very simple. And the closer we come to reconciling that truth and understanding that truth, the more control we have over the reality that we exist in. And we can create this world into the beautiful place that we know it is, that we want it to be. And so this is really important in our transcendence, this understanding. Um, and I mean, just, I'm, gonna, I'm just gonna say, you know, I am everything, everywhere, and nowhere. I permeate all things, unified always, never apart. That's true for all of us. We are all everything, everywhere, and nowhere. We all permeate all things. We are all unified. We are all never apart. And we are a collective, whether we're in physical form or whether it's through the collective consciousness, we all affect each other truthfully, the people that live in my building, the people who live on the other side of the planet, we affect, my actions affect everybody. And I know this. So I try to move from the, a place of that knowing and project from the heart center as much as I possibly can. So, uh, I'm not here to lead either. I talked to a friend of mine one time and he said to me, my wife's never led anybody anywhere. And I got really upset. Because I was like, what is he talking about? And I even, I think I have this on my page. It's like, I personally, I have never led anybody anywhere. But I have also never followed anybody anywhere. But you are welcome to walk beside me on my path. And so I open you up to that. To journey with me on this path of transcendence. Because it's not my place to lead anybody. I'm just trying to give you information to help you on your path. To help you find your path. And then you walk your path. Okay, so I'm going to take a minute and I'm going to recenter myself. And then I think this Alpha Draco is going to come in. Um, and it's very interesting. I didn't ask for a name but I did get one um, in their language as well as a name, a, a title, I guess. So give me just a second. Um, this Alpha Draco Energy Collective came through. I think it's because to, to draw parallels between, I, I feel like it's because they want to draw parallels between how they transcended and separated from the Alpha Dracos that we associate with what's going on here on Earth versus who they are and where they're at right now and, and draw parallels between the humans who are part of this negative polarity who also have been referred to as the Cabal um, and the humans that will inherit the Earth that split in consciousness because that's what happened to these alpha dracos you have the negative ones who didn't want to leave this idea of duality power oppression uh hierarchy being on top and then the ones who chose to ascend to move into their center and into balance and make their way to the godhead okay so what they didn't i didn't ask them what their name was but uh, as they started engaging me, they paused and, uh, and they said, we, we, we are called. Um, so give me a second because it's uh, a little bit... <sighs> this is the clicking and the snapping of the mantis beings was easier. Let's just put it that way. Okay. So they do a, a very, um, a kind of a guttural of a growl, I would say. And it was like, um, and it's, it was almost like a that came out, but it was like, 
no S. There was no S. This is hard. I'm so sorry. a very guttural I can't roll my tongue but it's uh, almost like a chittering it's like a chittering and it does and it goes out um, so it's mm, oh. it's like I can't do the chittering oh sound of that first guttural mm, uh, the chittering is about the same length so there's two different sounds first and second uh, and I wish I knew how to play an instrument because I could kind of demonstrate it with that but I don't um, and then they uh, refer to themselves as radiance um, and it was interesting because I kept on hearing Rothschild and I'm like wait Rothschild that makes no sense just so you know the Rothschild family created the currency system that we know uh, that we use today and they would be considered at the top of the pyramid when you see the Illuminati stuff and you see the pyramid they're at the top of that okay they're like running the show um, and so I heard the Rothschild, I'm like, wait, this Alpha Draco energy is coming through and now their name cannot be Rothschild. And then they're like, no, I think the, the information all comes at once and it didn't come sequentially. So I got a little bit confused in how it was coming in. So radiance would be the verbal name versus the sound that I just projected and that was trying to demonstrate as their name in their tongue when if they were physically manifested um, and then so we go to Rothschild came in to demonstrate that negative polarity who is kind of controlling this whole uh, action that's happening here on earth there's many factors but if you want to talk about the CEO the chairman of the board that would be the Rothschilds okay um, and so with that uh, this Alpha Draco came into collective came in to talk about that so this energy has a choice now if you've watched any of my previous videos I've always said that this negative polarity is always welcome to come back into balance with Mother Earth and the rest of uh, the energy on this world as it transcends and they can stay here on Earth and transcend with Mother Earth or they can choose the lower vibration and in which case as Mother Earth transcends they will be forced to uh, incarnate on different worlds if we know the zeta reticuli they chose not to transcend and then they transferred their consciousness from being to being uh, and never passed back to the light and therefore never returned to god the unity and they created clones of the bodies to transfer the consciousness to and now those clones are no longer viable the physical form is no longer viable and therefore their race is, is has died out and now they're trying to come back and um, uh, kind of fold their DNA into ours and I've talked about that in depth but they've chosen that path this this energy that would be considered the cabal that is the path that they have chosen um, they are, have already started to transfer the consciousness so 
the top is always going to be at the top, the middle is always going to be at the middle, and the bottom is always going to be at the bottom because they choose to in, uh, not reincarnate. They choose to just transfer their consciousness from one clone to the to the other. That is their personal choice. That is where they are going. And every time I welcome them back into the collective consciousness that is transcending, I get so many messages that they're like, no way. They are not coming back. They're like, we, this is their choice. They're like, no. I mean, like hard no's. So I know that this transcendence at point is at different points is going to be very difficult for us because they're not going to let go. But nevertheless, it's our birthright to transcend and to inherit Mother Earth. This uh, neg this uh, Alpha Draco is coming in to draw parallels between their transcendence and our transcendence because that's what happened in their world. There were Alpha, Alpha Dracos who chose to go the negative path. They chose the lower vibration because they chose that duality. They wanted to remain in that duality, that hierarchy of I'm the powerful one, you're beneath me, of control, manipulation, and uh, oppression that is the path because those people on top want to maintain their place on top not all the reptiles not all the reptilian beings not all the alpha draco chose that path there are many loving compassionate um, beings of reptilian descent who are very uh, who vibrate at a very high level that have transcended not only consciousness not through not only through their consciousness but also have ascended the physical form and now are pure consciousness and they are here to create change in the universe from the heart center just like the mantis beings just like so many of these channels um have uh, the circle of hope i think is one was uh that i saw recently um they are a, many different beings who from different worlds who come together to project love and light energy to the universe to help us transcend, to help the universe transcend, not just humanity, but we are one of their uh, areas of focus right now to help us become um, more centered in our energy, understanding who we truly are and transcend. The Alpha Dracos, like the Mantis beings, that was a collective of Mantis beings complete from bottom to top. Who are talking about their role in kind of uh, uh, understanding um, and the keepers of the knowledge of the DNA. Um, this Alva Draco uh, energy is very much a protective energy. They're very territorial and they're very protective of their people, of their beings, of uh, their land, and of their space. This is part of their consciousness this and it manifested in their dna and their coding in their um when they manifested as physical beings but at this transcended state that is their role just as the the man mantis beings understands all dna of all beings the alpha draco understand the necessity of protection of guarding the family guarding the heart center, guarding unity in the universe. So it's not, they're not just protecting reptiles, reptilian beings or Alpha Draco, they're, they are protecting the integrity of the units that are, that exist throughout this universe, whether it's the family, whether it's the world, the planet, whether it's the solar system, whether it's the um, galaxy, they oversee that protective energy of the unit, the unity, okay? And that's something they take very seriously, and it's something they're very good at. So they um, are here to help protect Mother Earth, to help protect the integrity of who we are, and how we exist and the reality that we're trying to create and the birthright that is ours uh, what this world will become and there's many collectives that are here projecting energy onto earth to help with this transition 
uh, and this Alpha Drago is part of that. So this is a very strong and definitive energy. Sorry. And when I first engaged them, reptiles, reptilian energy in general, not just this Alpha Draco, they took me to my childhood when I was a kid. I would hang out with the boys and we'd go catch lizards. And I loved, loved it. And when we'd catch them, I loved the lizards. They had that, they were, they were, they could camouflage, which I found fascinating. They had this beautiful um, skin, this hardened skin on their back, and it was just so extraordinary, and it could change and camouflage it, right? And then when you flipped them over, normally they'd be squirming because they were like, oh my God, you caught me. Um, but you flip them over and you rub their bellies and it calmed them down and they would just lay there and then the blue bellies we loved the blue bellies and the blue was just like and this is when I was in single digits you know seven eight nine and then rubbing their belly and their belly was so soft it was there's just this huge juxtaposition between the hardness of the back and the softness of the belly and I just was fascinated and I loved them and we never kept them obviously you can't do that we'd let them go but they just took me to that incredible amount of affection and love and fascination that I had with this uh, creature that lived on our planet to help me understand that to help me re-engage that because there's so much negative energy and no negative intention and negative connotations with reptilian beings in the universe that they wanted me to go back to that initial interaction with reptiles to really revisit that fascination and that childlike wonder with these creatures. And so it helped me to appreciate the beauty. So I've had reptilians come into my room um, before and, um, and now I can engage that with joy and appreciation for their trust in me and um, and faith and then also share that trust and faith with them um, so that's really important and when I engaged these alpha dragos I saw pictures on Gaia of them and I was never afraid I was always like I, I don't want to get emotional I keep getting emotional but they're so regal and majestic, just the way they carry themselves and they hold themselves. There is just this beauty that I can't even articulate, that I feel from that energy that they project. Like there is an integrity to this energy that is beyond words. Um, and this is true of all, all of these beings because it's part of this love of their people and their land and this desire to maintain the integrity of that and the protection of that within their culture that is profound and meaningful. And it's really well beyond where we are right now. Um, you know their children and their families were always first and we've uh, we've been systematically uh, destroyed our families have been systematically destroyed our communities are being systematically destroyed right now and these reptiles would never allow that to happen these reptilians would never allow that to happen within their communities and so this alpha draco energy coming in um, this radiance coming in is here to start to reinforce the importance of that family unit of the unification of our communities the protection of our communities and i think also i feel very strongly to honor those who are on the front lines who will be asked to protect those who cannot protect themselves there are people that will have to be walking the line between light and dark and they're going to have to be making very difficult decisions and I'm grateful that I'm not going to be that person making those decisions, but I will honor the people who are put in those positions to make those tough choices because it's going to be hard. 
and this Alpha Draco energy, this radiance is coming in to help fortify that energy. And it's coming in to help fortify these people, these beings on this earth, humans that will have to walk that line. And they are coming in to help guide them. The people who, and also remember there is no failure. When actions are driven and derived from a place of love and light, from goodness, when your intention is of the highest good to help, there is no failure. You, sh you have to honor your choices and you have to honor who you are. As long as you've come from a place of goodness and your intention is to do good and to help those around you, that's all anybody can ask. So don't fall into the trap of being judged and allowing people to judge you when you know in your heart, from your heart center, that your actions come from a place of goodness. And so once again, back to this radiance energy, the Alpha Draco is here to support and fortify those people who are going to be walking that line as we move through this transcendence and has, as we remove this negative polarity from, from this world, as we are welcomed into the galactic community and find joy, love, and happiness. This is a really important component of this transition. And so this Alpha Draco came in to um, share their presence um, with me and with you through me. So I'm going to take a few breaths and see if they have, if they're going to come in and speak directly to you. We are radiance and we are the fire in your heart, in your soul. We inspire the warrior within you. We inspire the strength from the heart center. We inspire and help you drive from a place of goodness. You are transcending and moving into balance with, with Mother Earth. But it is becoming more clear that you will have to expel with more action this negative polarity who does not want to relinquish control and move into balance with Mother Earth and all the beings that exist on this world. We mourn this choice that they have made but we honor you from the heart center. You are, your emotions focused in a place, from a place of goodness, focused from the heart center, will drive you into transcendence. And we are here to guide and help you with these hard decisions. We understand the messages of love and compassion and kindness, tolerance, faith, trust in your divine creator. We understand this, we encourage this, and we are truly inspired by this within our own collective, within our own hearts, within our own minds. But you, are, you will be pushed to the point where your leaders will feel that they will have to defend their children like I defend my children. We will inspire and help those drive forward from the heart center, from a place of goodness, from a place of kindness, and from a place of balance, but also knowing that it may become necessary to defend your children, your women, your senior citizens, those people who cannot and will not be able to defend themselves. You cannot just leave them to die. They must be defended. And your warriors, your soldiers, will be called to arms. We hope that this does not come to pass. But every step further into on this path shows the divergence of the negative and the positive polarities 
and what will need to take place in order for there to be balance. If the collective consciousness was unified in its choice to transcend to a higher vibration, this would not be an issue. This would not even be up for discussion. But as you look at your world and you see the disparity between negative and positive polarity, and if you truly look at the information that is being provided to you, you will see the manipulation, you will see the darkness, and you will see where this is going. This is not an attempt to instill fear in you. This is an attempt to inform you that you have the power to create the change. Unify with your leaders. Unify in your community. Unify in your trust and faith in your God, in your divine creator. Trust in that being, that energy, that knowing, and transcend to a place of love and light from the heart center. If the resistance continues of the negative and the positive polarity, you will be creating your reality every second of every minute of every day with every decision that you make. You can prevent this, but it must be you that does it. But we are always here to help guide those who may need our guidance. We have experienced this polarity on our world and we overcame it. We expelled the negative energy that now travels the universe. They overcome other worlds, oppress other worlds. They made that choice. They separated from our collective consciousness and they've come here to your world to do the same thing. They will be leaving your world now. They see the writing on the wall. They see the transcendence. They know they cannot override transcendence. They cannot override the path of Mother Earth. So they will be leaving your world and finding other worlds to conquer because they cannot change your sun. They cannot change your path. This is your birthright. Those who remain on your world from this negative polarity will be attempt, have been attempting to maintain control, but they feel like abandoned children. The Alpha Dracos that came to your world owe these people nothing. These humans nothing. They were a tool to oppress and gain the resources of Earth. Now they will leave these humans behind and these humans just who have also oppressed humanity and used them to at, to do their bidding use them as slaves use them as property just the way the alpha these negative polarity alpha dracos use them have no one to help oppress they are alone they are losing, have lost control of most. The little bits that they have control of, they're willing to fight for. So we are here to support those who may have to defend those spaces that this negative polarity is trying to hold on to. In the end, they will not be able to maintain control as Mother Earth transcends, if your vibration does not match that of Mother Earth, you will not be able to remain. This negative polarity will be leaving your world. 
that is universal law. If their vibration, vibration does not match that of Mother Earth, they will not remain. Again, we do not send this message to instill fear. We, ins we send this message to instill hope, to let you know that come what may, you are supported. Come what may, you will transcend. Come what may, you will find joy, love, and happiness in your world as the galactic community welcomes you. Thank you for your time. We are always here. We support the warriors of your world, the earthly archangels of your world who will defend the helpless, often with their lives, but they will be embraced by the divine creator for eternity. Thank you. We welcome you to the galactic community. Thank you very much.